Coach, what's impressed you most about Aaron Beasley through the first two weeks of the season? Um, I think it's a continuation for the way he ended the season. Um, I think I've said this uh, several times. When you go back and watch the tape of last year, he was the most consistent linebacker that we had, whether he came off the bench or started. And I think that, uh, you know, the confidence that he built off of last year carried over through the spring and the summer. And uh, he's playing the way we expect him to. Jeremiah T. Lander got a lot of run in the second half Saturday. When you went back and watched the, the film, what, what did he do well? And, and, and where is he still going to continue to improve? Um, Jeremiah, you know, like we talked about, you know, earlier, um, he's a max effort. He's going to run through a wall, um, plays with a lot of intensity. And he brought that to the table in the limited reps that he had. I think he hit the ball five times uh, in the second half. You know, just little things. Um, as far as being in the right place in, in uh, pass coverage, he really could have helped us on the one long pass on third down that they completed in the, into the boundary. Um, but all in all, we were impressed with his uh, effort one, which is what you expect from him. But he hit the ball. He tried to play fast and, and physical, which is uh, you know, a calling card for him. So we, he got his first college game out the way, and I think the best is yet to come. Coach, what are the Kind of the topics of fall camp was how much how improved your depth was at the linebacker position, and then after week one it gets tested immediately. How would, would how would you say, say about the response of Elijah and Arion moving into bigger roles? Um, those uh, those are, are young talented players. Um, um, we rotate a lot so they get the practice reps. Um, we we hope that because of the way that we rotate, those guys are ready to step in because you never know what's going to happen. Um, but Elijah, I felt like, was ready to step up. Um, Keenan went through about half a spring, so he was able to get a bunch of first-team reps in the spring. And, you know, we always coach him to say, you're one play away from being the starter or going from a third-teamer to a second-teamer. And, you know, that mentality really came out last week. I thought Elijah did a, a great job. I mean, he got two, two wicked shots early in the first quarter. I, I didn't know how he would bounce back from, and he came back and, you know, I thought he played very, very well. And Arion is, as a freshman, you know, the maturity like we've talked about before is, you know, that of a junior or a senior. Um, he's gotten better every week. Um, um, but obviously the um, stakes are a little higher this week with our, his first SEC game. So we expect him to keep progressing. But, um, you know, the plays that he does make when he's out there are, are very, very good. We just have to elim eliminate the mistakes. Brian, kind of following up on, on Elijah, how did he do communication-wise, and how much responsibility does he have to make sure the defense is all on the same page? Um, that's the Mike responsibility. Mike's linebacker's responsibility is to be the take charge guy. Obviously, having a veteran like Aaron Beasley there really, really helps him. Um, I thought the communication was was good. Probably never great, especially with some of the, you know, um, how can I put it? Um, different formations that um, Austin P lined up in. Um, they really test your communication and your ability to get lined up from the front end to the back end. But um, I thought he did a good job. Obviously, it could have been better. But um, you know, for the most part, it didn't, it didn't hurt us. But we really want him to be uh, a lot more vocal you know, this week and make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, with those young guys again, did anything surprise or impress you about what they were able to do and how quickly they were able to jump in to, to help the group? Um, no, it, it, would take, it would take a lot to surprise me. My expectations are high, and I always tell them I want their expectations to be higher than mine. Um, if, they, if they don't go into a game ready to play 75 snaps and start and go out there and compete at a high level, I'd be highly disappointed. Uh, the, uh, the only surprise I would, I would uh, you know, say, um, you know, is how physical they're going to be. I, I would say that. Uh, we, we always say it. You can't really practice it during the week. You know, we were a couple weeks removed from, you know, our last scrimmage. So some of those guys didn't get a lot of reps versus Virginia. I thought for the most part those guys really tried to play physical because I think the speed and the intensity part and the assignment part, I really expect them to be, you know, as, as ready as a starter would be. But then the, physic the physicality of it, you want to make sure that they match it or, or can exceed what your expectation, you know, would be. And I thought they did a good job there. Give us a breakdown on what you see from Florida's offense. Uh, Florida, very, very talented. Um, 
you know, we always start with the quarterback. I think Graham Mertz, um, I had a chance to see him when I was in the last job I was at. Um, and I know he's a super, super talented kid, um, you know, real, really, really good arm, really, really good pocket presence. Um, I know he was highly recruited kid coming out of high school, shows the poise and, you know, shows the pocket presence of a big time quarterback. We're going to have to do a great job with him. And, you know, the thing that I think he's done, you know, in the first two games, he's shown the ability to pick up yards with his, with his legs, which I know he's not known for. So that adds an extra element uh, to him. Um, and then uh, the obviously the best backfield we, we would have seen to this point in the Montreal Johnson and um, Trevor Etienne. I think those guys are really the guys that make their offense go. We have to do a great job, you know, stopping the run <clears throat> and controlling those guys. They're two very, very talented running backs that I think their offense feeds off of. And then, you know, wide out wise, uh, I think Ricky Pearsall is one of the best, you know, wide outs in, in the SEC. Uh, right now, he does it all for him. You line him up all over the field. He makes the tough catches and the tough plays. Um, we're going to have to know where he is, you know, on every play. But a very, very well coached team, big physical offensive line. They, uh, you know, do a lot of things to, you know, create mismatches with their scheme. We're going to have to do a great job. You mentioned communication. You mentioned being assignment sound. We're going to have to do a great job this week. Brian, you mentioned Elijah played well on Saturday after taking those two hits as he gets into this Florida game against an offense that wants to run the football, what's going to be key for him to take the next step and be successful? It's going to be uh, reading his keys, putting his eyes in the, in the right place. Um, the big thing, you know, with, with um, their run game, they have a lot of, you know, movement with, on their offense, and that could lead, especially an inexperienced linebacker, to put his eyes in the wrong spot. We got to make sure he's you know, obviously in tune to what we're doing on defense and make sure where we keep our run gap integrity with all the things that they do. If he does that, I know he'll be fine. Adam and Paige. I know you like to have a deep rotation, but obviously you've got two freshmen uh, in that rotation. Is there, a, is there a great temptation just to say we're going to go with two guys and just stick with two, two guys the whole game? The great part about our uh, system is the guys that practice the right way, they're going to play. You know, we're not going to rotate just to put a body in there. If I, if, if I ever put a guy in there and I don't think he could help us win the game, then that's shame on me. Those guys earn their right to go practice. I mean, they earn their right through practice to go out there in the game. And when they're out there, kind of like I said earlier, we look at them as starters. If they don't practice the right way that week and they haven't been playing at a high level, they're not going to play. The rotation starts because that we, have, we feel like we have four or five guys that practice at a high level and can be starters. We don't expect a drop off when we put guys in the game. And if we did, I'd be doing everybody a disservice, and I wouldn't do that. Against Austin P, it looked like there was uh, occasional times where the offense, there were some breakdowns, and whether it was the quarterback scramble on a fourth down or just being able to pound the ball on the ground, what did you see in film from that game, and how are you addressing that, getting ready for a run-heavy Florida team? Um, the quarterback, you know, got out on, on us a couple times, and it was misfits, kind of what we said. We had, you know, two guys in the same gap, didn't get, uh, you know, our leverage on a couple plays with eyes in the wrong spot. They were all correctable mistakes that we wouldn't expect to make, um, and, you know, they were able to take uh, advantage of it uh, a couple of times, you know, a couple of times on the fourth downs with the quarterback. But, um, you know, we feel like we got it corrected. You know, I would expect to see something similar that – uh, like what Austin P did this week. So we, we made our corrections and everybody on the field kind of understood where the mistakes were. So we feel like we can move on from them. But they did get us a couple times with leverage, but it wasn't because of the call. It was because we had guys a couple times that didn't have their eyes in the right spot or, you know, kind of fit in the wrong, in the wrong gap. Coach, I know it's only been a week since, since Keenan's injury, but how involved has he been with the room and just what's his communication been like with the younger guys? Very. Um, you know, one of the things that he always brought to the table was that uh, leadership aspect. You know, once um, he was cleared to come back, he's been in every meeting. Um, you know, obviously, he, was, uh, he traveled with us. He's going to travel with us uh, down to Gainesville. He's an integral part of what we do. Um, it wasn't just the physical ability. It was his mental capacity to help everybody in the room because of his experience. And that's just carrying over and probably 
holds a little bit more weight in the room now because he's seeing it you know, from the sidelines. So most of those guys, when they're in the room, they'll gravitate to him. And even now, you know, during practice, he's on the sideline. When, you know, the guys that are not in, they're down there talking to him and uh, Pat Garland. And they're, they're like, those guys are like second coaches on the field now. Cut. Kind of on the flip side of that, is there any part of Elijah Herring's game that you feel really reflects what Keenan has showed in practice and kind of shows that he's been learning from him as a younger guy? Um, yes. Um, you know, they're both bigger, stronger guys. You know, they're both 230-pound-plus, you know, linebackers. So you expect the physicality that Keenan brought. Um, you know, obviously Keenan was a little bit more seasoned because obviously he had played a lot more football. Elijah's still learning you know, per se, but there is some similarities in, in, in their game. You just see the inexperience at time with Elijah, but that's gotten so much better. I think getting that first start out the way, he's going to be even better this week. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.